Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, my song. I'm supposed to play my song. Okay. Yeah, Stachichi. Yeah, I see you. I see you. All right, so some people are some people are getting jealous of my cap here already. <laughs> All right, yes, yes, yes. We'll be doing this briefly. We'll be doing this as brief as possible. This is um, thank you for joining. Thank you, Chichi. Thank you, everybody for joining. We'll be having a wonderful time this evening. Uh, we, we we'll just have a session for like thirty minutes thereabout. You know, we we'll be doing the you know, the domination tour, you know, with Richard, Richard O'Kerry Jr. is the guest for tonight. He's the guest for tonight on the domination tour. And um, we'll be talking about being an influential musician, being a highly paid musician, you know. So um, I'll bring him right in, then we'll have a wonderful session together. Yeah, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Enter to Bluetooth. All Bluetooth right. Connected. All right. Um, I'll bring in our guest right away. I'll bring in our guest right away. Yeah, yeah, Simon Peter. Thank you for joining. Thank you. I was at your 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 session. Um, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Recently, and it was a wonderful time I had at uh, your session. Simon Peter, thank you for joining. Thank you. Yeah, my wife is also watching. <laughs> all right, Hello, thank you. Thank you all for joining. Yes, Mr. <laughs> Richard himself. I greet you, sir. <laughs> Good evening, no. I'm I'm greeting from this side of Africa. <laughs> So good to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure, sir. Thank you for having me. This is a domination tour, and we are landed. We have landed on the Almighty G Sax platform. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's such a pleasure yes. and an honor to have you here. You know, I see all thank the great you. things, all these good things you are doing. This guy right here, this guy Richard has. I mean, the guy has. He has done so, he has affected me so in so many ways. My music career, ah. my, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, my, when, I, when I did, when I just released my first, my, my single, um, the video I released last year, he was the one who did the, the launching and everything, man. He's a fantastic yes. and a solid guy, <laughs> you know. So when um, pleasure, he was to do this uh, domination tour and to bring me to my platform, I was like, wow, it's, it's, it's such, it's something I would gladly do. You know, thank you, so, thank you, thank um, you. and he's he's um Richard is is um the one of the the um fastest growing and one of the best you know book launch um, um platforms that you can ever think. If you want to launch your books, you want to launch your music, you want to launch anything, just leave it for this guy. <laughs> he will create your, your database for you, create your audience for you. Plus the thing around, I mean, there's so many testimonials. <laughs> he handled my wife's book. He handled my wife's book. You know, the, 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 the two books my wife just wrote. And man, <laughs> those books are everywhere right now. Thanks to Richard and his team for, for that. Thanks to ProLaunch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My book that I'm, I'm working on too, he's the person that is definitely going to handle that. We are ready. Else. We are ready. <laughs> <laughs> so we are ready. This domination tour is on is on my platform today. He's been going around a lot of platforms, you know, um, yes, talking about the domination tour and how 
you can get paid with what you're doing, how to be influential with what you're doing, you know, both online and offline. So we'll be talking about exactly. being an influential musician and a highly paid one. Welcome, Richard. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, let's go straight. Uh, we, we, I don't want us to do uh, more than 30 minutes max for the five minutes, but let's just go straight yeah. and hit the ground running. Um, I'll go straight. You know, uh, b before I ask the first question, a lot of people, I've met a lot of, a lot of um, let's narrow it down to music now, to, you know, okay. the, the music industry. You know, I've met a lot, of, a lot of musicians. Okay, let me also narrow it down to the gospel industry, for instance, you know. Music is general anyway, yeah. but let's start it to the gospel industry, for instance. I've met quite a number of them. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends, gospel uh, artists and all of that. Quite a number of them, you know, very good, talented, gifted, good at their craft, but they are not earning as they should earn. They are not, mm. um, um, they are not earning as they should earn. They are not, um, you know, being as influential as they ought to be compared to yeah. what they carry inside. So, and that just made me realize that talent is not enough. Mm, there are some persons exactly. who are not as, yes, there are some persons who are not as talented as some other persons. Those persons who are not as talented, they are earning much mm -hmm. more money than those who are highly talented. So, having a talent or a gift is not enough. Exactly. It's the market size exactly. of the gift that is very important. Mm -hmm. The promotional <laughs> part of the gift or the talent is what's most yeah. important. Yeah. Like I would always tell people, once in the, in the I had an interview session last week where I was invited, and I told them, I said, well, I, 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 I use an analogy, what we call the rod and the staff. When the Bible says the rod and the staff mm -hmm. comforts me, I said the rod mm -hmm. is your talent, is your gift, is your craft. Why the staff mm -hmm. is the market side of your gift or your craft. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they must work together <laughs> so that both of them mm -hmm. will comfort you. <laughs> so... Now, I'll be asking the first question. Yes, so... first question. <laughs> I'll be asking the first question. Now, Mr. Richard, why is it important for a musician to build influence and become highly paid? Thank you. So, thank you so much, Mr. G. Sachs. Thank you for having me on your platform. Thank you for all the times that I've known you and the awesome things that we've done. Uh, this is a domination tour, and basically it's about spreading this message of territorial domination. A lot of people do not know um, that I'm into music. Uh, I have, I was earlier today, I was telling somebody I have like 24 songs I've not really released. I have a music company, 24 songs recorded on Google Drive. Wow. I have a music company. I have a, I have a, this thing. I've been a drummer for eight years, and wow. I've, I've been in the choir. I've been in the Oh, okay. it's hanging. Okay, okay. Yeah, we are, we are hearing you are hearing you now. Okay. So uh, it's it's so, it's hanging. And okay, okay, better. Yes, I've, I've been in the choir and I I, I had a meet so why I'm painting you know, this thing is the fact that I saw the opportunity in the, music, in the music industry, and even up till now, the music industry is still untapped. And the funny thing is mm. that it's a, an industry that is valued at $15 billion in Nigeria. That's wow. a whole lot of money in that industry. Yeah. And it's still yet untapped. There are so many places that are untapped. And there are so many reasons why people need to build influence. If you are to go the biblical way, the, the idea is that anything that you are doing, you are supposed to dominate with it. Anything that you are doing, you are supposed to do it at a level as something you would use to create influence. Influence not mm. just being popular. There's a difference between somebody being popular and somebody who has influence. Influence mm. being that you have the capacity to create change in a lot of people's life. Just look at somebody like Nathaniel Bassi, or you even, even look at the normal... If, if you look at the contemporary musicians, the secular musicians, uh, uh, the uh, the Olamide, the whiskey, the all those, there's a, a whole lot of influence they wield, and a mm. lot of them, to a, a huge degree, are not utilizing that influence to cause powerful change. I'm going to come to that later on when I talk about um, um, building, creating, a, building a course in when it, building influence. So, in, there's a part of income that is a lot of money that you can make when it comes to 
uh, your music. There's a part of running it as a career, something that forms your own dreams. There's a part of impacting lives, the power it has to change lives, to transform lives, to cause transformation. Music has been known to do a lot of our just a skill. That's it. I can't hear you. Yeah, I said it was okay. hanging. We lost you at some point. Okay, so okay. just go that last part again. Okay, so I was basically saying that building income and building influence is something that nobody should run away from. There's a whole lot you can do. There's a whole lot. Somebody like Fela, uh, 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 Fela, Fela did, yes, Fela did in Nigeria with his music. There's a whole lot somebody like Lucky Dube did in the world with his music. So, and if people, there's, there are people who even have this, uh, people like um, K6, the drummer. There are a lot of people who did amazing things using their skill in terms of creating transformation. So people need to stop thinking small about what you have and think of what you have as something that you can use to transform life, cause change. You know, think to the level of, can you, can you stop corruption in Nigeria using your music? Wow. Can wow. You, can you, can you stop girl child? Can you stop girl child, uh, uh, girl child really? issues, child torture and all yeah, those things? and all of that. With your music. So that is the point where people need to think about whatever it is you are doing. Yes, you can. You cannot grow beyond, or your skill cannot grow beyond the capacity or vision you have for it in your mind. So, mm. but that's why people, and and the essence of this thing is, telling more to your question is how far, how how much do you see your how. with your music then you cannot be able to do anything mm. 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 wow 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 that's i mean you just you just hit the nail on the on the head you just hit the nail yes, on sir. the head you know where you said pop, um, 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 popularity does not amount to influence that's i mean for that that, yes. that just set it straight for a lot of us now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. ask you a next question. The, the next question is, will be, how does a musician start from the scratch to build influence? Mm. How does a musician start from the okay. scratch to build influence? So I think you should you should help the minds of musicians right now. network is acting on um, influence and become highly paid as a musician so um, it's a six step framework so but I'm going to try and hit the nail on the head for each of them and, and get straight to the point for each of them the first thing is about the first thing when it comes to building influence is um, becoming a master craftsman becoming a master craftsman becoming a master, a master craftsman, craftsman is somebody Yes, becoming a master craftsman because for whatever it is that you are doing, the fund foundational thing is that for the kind of transformation and vision you have created yourself, mm. what kind of ability do you need to be, do, what, how good do you need to be to create that transformation? How mm. much of skill do you need to have for you to Uh, 
that you've asked yourself, how do I become a master craftsman to become that? Take, for example, the Levites in the Bible. There is a reason why the Levites were chosen to lead everything that has to do with praise and worship for the Israelites. Mm. Mm. Because for them, these people were master craftsmen. These people were, God is somebody who knows how to give positions to people who he knows can deliver, can deliver on that, on that uh, position. And he gave the Levites that. And you see that all through the Bible, anything that has to do with worship and music, it's the Levites that are called. So the question you ask yourself is, when it comes to this field, are you going to be the person who is going to be considered the master craftsman in that place? Mm. So being a master craftsman involves, is, is in three levels. For you to be a master craftsman, the first thing is your ability to think and document. Document. Thinking and documentation is, you know, it's out of your thinking that creativity is spawned. When you are thinking, you are thinking of the music, you are thinking of how to make your music, you are thinking of um, um, how, to, um, your, how to basically make your music, and you are documenting it. So let me give us an example. My own is not thinking, you know, a lot of people do not know, but I dream of music. Hmm. I get music that is done. That's how I got 24 music. I have it on my Google Drive. I have wow. like 24 songs on my Google Drive. So I, I get it as they are being sung. So what I do is I have my phone beside my bed. Immediately I get up documentation. I record it and save it on Google record Drive. It. Thank you, sir. Be, being a master craftsman is not, uh, is not just about skill, but are you documenting that so that at any time you... So that's what being a master craftsman is. The second thing is tech skills. Tech. tech Thinking skills. and documentation. Documentation and coming, recording, video, video, writing, and all those things. The second thing is tech skills. In this age, Anybody who is running a business, whatever it is, when, that, when anybody who is building influence needs to be tech savvy. Mm. As Kule Shoryan would, would say, that you are not a musician going to acquire tech skills. You mm. are a technology expert using music. technology to drive your music. Your music, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so in this age, you need to acquire tech skills. Do you, how can you use technology to, to spread your music? How can you use technology to do editing, even do play drums? All those things. Tech skills is the second thing. The third thing in craftsmanship is your music skills. Music skills in terms of when you talk about music theory, when you talk about sight reading, when you talk about um, uh, things like uh, keyboard ear. Yeah, all those things are things is. that have that improve your ability to deliver, be a master craftsman. Okay? Wow. So these are the three levels of being a master craftsman. The first thing is your thinking and documentation. Second thing is your tech skills. And the third thing is music skills. There's a reason why all these musicians, now most of them have their studios in their house. That is, they acquire the tech skills. It reduces cost for them, and they're able to produce. first rate version of yourself. That's basically on being a master craftsman. The second thing is finding your sweet spot. Finding? The second thing, your sweet spot. So the second thing is So that's
in terms of language. Okay. So, in terms of language, he connects immediately with Yoruba people. Mm. So, that's his sweet spot. So, it's, it's not just about, I want to do music. If you are doing your music, think in terms of how do I immediately connect with a particular kind of audience? The second way, to, the second sweet spot is, is in terms of instrumentation. Somebody okay. like Nathaniel Bach, you always see him with a trumpet. Somebody like Jesus, you always see him with a saxophone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a sweet that. spot. Okay. Uh, it's hard for me to think of him without thinking of saxophone. It, yeah. you, can, you cannot think of nothing without thinking of his trumpet. Something like um, Tony Allen. Tony is very, very good drummer. The guy that died this year, he's a very good drummer. And he has created a niche for himself when it comes to drum. He played for Fela, the, the late Fela, uh, Fela, the musician. Yeah. And he's referred to as the pioneer of drumming, like in Nigeria. Yeah. So, and that's his sweet spot. Somebody like k Sticks is very good at drumming. He's known globally as a drummer. But also he does music. He teaches music. He teaches music yeah. theory. And he sings also. But his yeah. sweet spot is drum. So that's in terms of instrumentation. The another way, another uh, sweet spot is in terms of voicing. So somebody like, if you hear somebody like Simi, once Simi sings, you, you will know that Simi is singing. That's her, yeah. Because, that's her signature, <laughs> her signature voice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because Simi has a way she sings. Yeah. So when most times, one of the, when most times people need to find and you'd be surprised that somebody does not, your own, your sweet spot here may not just be one thing. It could just be two or three or four things. If you have up to like five things now as sweet spots, that's where this person don't blue. Yeah. <laughs> when you have as your sweet spot. You have another sweet spot is arrangement of music. Your, the, your song arrangement. When you hear somebody like um, Tim Godfrey, Tim Godfrey is music arrangement. Somebody like Kirk, Frank, Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Kirk Franklin doesn't even sing much in his songs, but the arrangement. Yeah. Arrangement. Okay? Yeah. Do you have a, do, do, did you have to add anything? Well, um, no, I think you've, you've, you're you the person, you're the guest of today, so let's just fire on. <laughs> okay. okay, so and that's Kirk Franklin. And that sweet spot is in lyrics. Lyrics, okay. your quali the quality of your lyrics, how beautiful your lyrics are. When you see people like uh, Hillsong, his, their lyrics are very, very powerful lyrics. People like Two-Face in Nigeria has powerful lyrics. So they are not just going to come to you and begin to say shoku shoku, hello baby baby baby, all, all those <laughs> normal things. But you see meaning in their songs because their lyrics are well as, um, aligned. Yeah. So these are various sweet spots that somebody can find when it comes to music. And the good thing is you pay attention to every of these things to find your own and then leverage it to infuse that in whatever it is that you are doing. Yeah. So the the third thing I'm uh, in terms okay, of before building you go, influence, before you okay. go on, one more thing I'm also going to add to all of that. You 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 practically said it all, but what, I think one yeah. more thing I'm also going to add to that is is kind of I'll use the word simplicity. Simplicity in the sense that no matter how technical or how whatever they put in the song, it's still yes. as easy enough for the audience worldwide to learn yeah. the song. Yes, uh, even Sinat a maximum song, way maker. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, no matter how 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 technical the instrumentation and everything is, the song itself is as simple enough for even a market woman in the in one village to yeah. be able to hear that song 
hear it once or twice and yes. learn the lyrics. <laughs> That's also just one, exactly. what I wanted to add. Exactly. Exactly. So, so the thought, these are yes. Th so these are things that you infuse into your music to <clears throat> whatever it is you are doing to create that kind of differentiation for yourself in the marketplace. And these are the things that help you to build influence faster because people now know you for certain distinctions. People know you for yeah. certain things. Okay, so it's not about you trying to be everything and every to everybody, but be something based on this uh, self and for your audience. The third thing, which is, I think, the, the ultimate thing when it comes to building influence is build, build a memorable community or driving a course. Build a memorable community or driving a course. We are in the age now where if you don't have community, you're not doing anything. Like, this is the community age. People follow you for the, for, when I say community, it's basically about for a way of thinking or for a, go, or for a course that you are promoting. So the question mm. you ask yourself is, what are you about? What, what, when we say course, when you, that's where you think of somebody like, um, what's his name, Fela, Fela? Fela was always, always against the corruption in Nigeria, the, 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 yeah. the, you know, of the bad treatment by politicians, the bad government in Nigeria, the yeah. bad leadership in Nigeria and all those things. So that's yeah. the course that he's promoting. And what will happen is that all those people who share the same kind of values and interests and desires with you will cling to you. Yeah, they will listen yeah. to you. Exactly. So it's going to be very difficult. Or I don't know if it's going to be, but there's, there's, this, now, building a course is about you determining what you want to actually stand for in music. Do you want to... Do you want to create meaning and legacy? Legacy in terms of 20 years or not from now, 50 years from now, what will people be saying about you? Is it just about the money for you? Or but what meaning do you want to leave in the hearts of people when it comes to your music? That is why more than up to 50 years, I think, since Fela has died, till today we are still mentioning his name for what he stood for. Oh. That is why somebody like Bob Marley, that is why somebody like mm. Loki Dube, the fought against mm. apartheid regime in South Africa. Those people till today are still standing. See, you will not, it, it, I, I've never seen somebody invite a uh, whiskey to a conference to come and teach. Yeah. Or invite, uh, or invite, what's his name? Nothing against them, but it's just about, if, if I invite them, it's just for, to, for them to bring audience. <laughs> yeah. But you, you will not find, but you, you generally not find them being invited to conference to come and teach and impact lives. So the question you ask yourself, what course are you driving? Nathaniel Bassi yeah. drove a course with the Hallelujah Challenge that he did. Yeah. <clears throat> Lee Sachs is driving a course with his prison, uh, prison programs that he, he does. The concert, yeah, the prison, yeah. A prison concert. So that is a course that you are promoting. And for you as a musician, it's not just about you making money and finding gigs and making money and all those things. But you need to stand, be about something. Be about, be about something. And when we say driving a course, people need to know that you don't need to be influential to drive a course. You drive a course to be influential. Wow. That mm. is so the only thing. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't need to be, yes, you don't need to be influential because when they, when they say driving a course, I think it's for popular people now, popular people will, but as somebody who is growing, who wants to be known, who wants to build influence, you need to start now to drive a course so that you can build influence. Okay. Wow. So that's the number three thing, drive a course, build, and when you're driving this course, Build, have a central community, a community where people know you. <clears throat> so it could be there's Facebook groups, there is WhatsApp groups, there are a lot of platforms people can set up now to engage with your community, people who share the same. Invest heavily in visibility and distribution. So this is where most people, when 
invest heavily. Invest heavily in invisibility and distribution. The thing that comes to their mind is, ah, I don't have money. And it bothers me why somebody will spend thousands of naira, possibly even up to hundreds of thousands of naira to release a single and do a video. But then even to spend 50K to now promote that song. To so promote it is a problem. difficult for you. Then why did you release the song? <laughs> <laughs> Then why did you release the song? I don't know. See, now promoting the song itself. <laughs> yes, now. Because, see, eh, that's, that, that's the, that thing you said. You said, what did you say earlier? You said something earlier. Oh, I can't remember what that thing you said to, when we were starting. There was something you said. But the point is that... Yeah, okay, talent is not enough, right? Yes, yes, talent is not enough, eh? The value of your talent in this age comes from yes. advertising and marketing. That is the truth. <laughs> in this the age, when it used to be looked at just at face value. <laughs> no. Not this. Not now. <laughs> it's not this. That's why I heard what you said earlier is you will see people who do not have skill, who do not know anything, but they are blowing, they are blowing because they are everywhere. That because is the truth. So, the, if, if you are spending 20,000 Naira to produce your music, or you are spending 100K to produce your music, you should spend times two to spread that I music. Said, yeah, to spread it. Because inside that music, all those things I've said earlier, inside your music comes, is inside it, you have your craftsmanship, you have yeah. your sweet spot, and more... Yes, that hear it, the more you drive the course. It, even that course that you are driving, everything is inside. And interests with you. And that's the point. So, the, in, wow. in, in terms of action, you ask yourself do you have a budget? for advertising every month? How much do you spend every month to promote your song? How much do you spend every month to promote whatever it is that you are doing? Promotion never stops whatever it is that you are doing. How much are you setting aside every month for advertising? One of the things that I ask people, anybody that is coming to me, you want to do a consultation with me or coaching program, it's one of the things that you answer is how much do you invest in advertising? Because that's the central way to find out how, how much importance you attach to what you are doing. So, mm. investing heavily in whatever it is that you are doing, it's very key. These days, it's very easy. You can boost the post naturally on Facebook and you do amazing things. I'm just saying in terms of basics, at least, to start doing something. There's a professional and techie way to it. But this is in terms That's of you start doing something. Yeah. So, wow. the next thing, is, the, the next thing, which is uh, the number five, is to monetize now. Let me talk about monetization. This is where everybody likes <laughs> the part of making money. So the part of making money is, uh, is, is incredible. Now, there are various ways for people to make money in music. There are, there are a lot of ways. I'm just going to list, list out some of them and then explain some of them. Uh, the first thing is music distribution. So music distribution is normal. Um, you do a song and of course you go through channels and third parties to distribute your music and you get paid for it. Uh, so that's one. The second part is merchandise. Merchandise is where you have um, a t-shirt for example, and then you have, if you have a community, this is where it sells. If you are driving a course and you have something like t-shirts, you have something like a cup, you have something like all those things are things that you can sell to make money with your music. So yeah, um, that's, that's where you have, that's for merchandising. Number three is intimate events. Well, sorry, go back to the, well, number one is what again? Number one is music distribution. Music distribution, Basically okay. where you sell your music through uh, music distribution channels, websites, um, what's this, like CD Baby, uh, yeah. all those platforms. They sell your music and you, you collect um, uh, uh, money for it. Then yeah. merchandise is the number two. 
The number no. three is intimate events. So events, it could be not just, it may not just be intimate event, but it's basically events that you host, and you know people pay ticket fees to, to be at that event to attend the event. Uh, you know that's where concerts and all those things. That's where they come in. And this is this is I, I saw this guy Kobams. I don't know if that was paid, but I think it was. This there's this thing that Kobams does, and you know he plays with his band. And it's like an intimate event. And you can charge premium yeah. for that. Because they are giving them yeah. a premium experience. They're giving them a premium. It's not just music that they are coming to hear. You know, there's this part of relationship. People, they are going to meet there. Probably your, your course. If you are driving a course, what the discussions you people are going to have there, all those things are something that you, people can pay for. Then you have uh, licensing. Licensing in Nigeria is not so popular. But it's something that is evolving. Licensing in the sense that they can use your song for a movie, they can use your song for um, a cartoon, they can use your song for as cover song for something, you know, a, a production. So you basically yeah. give them license and pay you for it, and you can use use that. So the the next one is gigs. So normal gigs that you know. People invite you to come and sing or play drums or play keyboard somewhere or uh, write music or all those things. People who are into songwriting, yeah. of course, you can charge and write songs for people. So that's the another thing. Now, another wow. part that is now evolving in Nigeria, which a lot of Nigerians, this is where they are making a lot of their money, money is publishing. So publishing in terms of publishing content. That's where you have all this YouTube monetization. That's where you have um, uh, people who do who write books. You can write a book and sell. That's where you have people who can do a course. That This is where you're going into the yeah. teaching part now. You are teaching your skill, your yeah. knowledge, your idea. I mean, I'm waiting yeah. for the day somebody like me. I don't know if they have it. I think probably they have it. Or somebody like Sinatch or Nathaniel Bassi, they say they want to release song. <laughs> oh, sorry, they would say they want to run a music school. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, the whole you world will come. Uh, Sinatch did because... something like that. Sinatch did something like that in Lagos, and the place was packed full. I mean, imagine. It, was, it was jammed. Imagine. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so imagine if somebody has spent time to you are using your course, you are using your craftsmanship to promote your music and you have built a huge following. At the time where you want to begin to sell your knowledge, at the time where you begin to teach what you know, you will make a lot of money. And people need to know that. that. When we mention somebody like Sinatch, they are thinking, ah, she's, she has blown, that she's already big now. But the fact is that, that she did not just wake up and become popular. She built yeah. up her popularity. She invested in herself, in publicity, in visibility, and all those things. And now it is easy. If you start now, what drives growth is not, it's, it's consistency. That's consistency. what drives growth. If, yes. That's if you are spending 1000 every week, make sure you are spending that 1000 to grow your Facebook page every week. If you are spending 2000 yeah. make sure you are spending it every week. Within one year, if you calculate, if you are getting 1000 every month, 1,000 likes every month. 1,000 every month will give you 12,000 likes. That is diff that is much better than when you had zero likes last year. That's but what true. will happen is that, but what will happen is that people will not do it. So when they, when they go into a new year, that new year becomes another version of the last year because you did not mm. invest in your growth. Mm. So that. Wow, wow. So basically, that's, that's the five steps. The last part I want to talk about is forging alliances. Alliances is basically relationships and the people that you collaborate with. You know, the people that you meet with to, you know, that's why you have all these artists, they collaborate with people. And the, the thing is yeah. that, uh, I noticed recently that Charlie Boy did a song, had been doing a song with select musicians. Okay, so Charlie Boy is somebody that I think he's 70 years now. I'll be 60. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's but he's so. trying to reinvent himself by using collaborations with the younger people. Younger so generation, yeah. 
himself. So, and collaborations will help you a lot. What I'm doing, this tour I'm doing is a collaborative work. Okay? That's true. People that you know that are your friends, that you can leverage on their influence to spread your message and go further. And one of the things, people need to stop being afraid of asking. I wrote this in my book, The Arts and Science of Territorial Domination. I'll talk about it later on. The arts of science of, the arts, one of the principles or concepts in the arts and science of territorial domination is the difference between asking and begging. There's a difference between asking and begging. Asking mm. means, I'm saying now in terms of when you to meet people and ask them to help you on their platforms. Asking yeah. is asking somebody to help you because you can offer him something in return. Begging yeah. is when you're you're asking somebody to help you as if you cannot offer him something in return. In return, yeah, in return, yeah. yeah. So asking People has to do with value. You. Communicating yes. value. Exactly. So what you have communicated value to So what you have communicated value to in the past or someone that you can communicate value to yes. at any time. Yes. That's why the Bible says, wow. ask and you shall receive. The Bible did not say, beg and you shall receive. It said, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> so, just yeah, say, beg. Yeah. And there's a reason Jesus Christ asked. When Jesus Christ made the disciples, see what he said. He said, come and I will make you fishers of men. That making is a value communication. Mm. So, the, the, the idea is, in their mind, they'll be like, what is it going to make us that we are not already? If they were curious. And seeing the small, small miracles that he was doing, you know, when they were fishing and then they caught fish, a lot of fishes, those are signals that, oh, this man can make us something that we are not. That's why they followed him. Jesus Christ did not come to his disciples and say, oh, God, my people, please help me. I do not have money today, but if you can help me today, the, the future is bright. And when we, I'm rich, will do amazing yeah. things. No, he didn't beg, but he came and said, I will make you fishers of men. That's a valuable yeah. position. So when you're meeting um, celebrities or anybody who is influential, go in that sense. Communicate as somebody who has value to offer. And then they, when they see that, they'll be willing to help you. So that's basically it. Thank you wow. so much, sir. Wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. So I have a, a couple of other questions anyway, but let's say I can quickly take them as fast as possible. You know, I think you, okay. you've, the next question I was going to ask, you have practically mm -hmm. um, talked, you know, about them in this last one you just answered. But I wanted to ask you, how do I move from low income to become highly paid as a musician? But I think you've, you've touched on um, it already on this particular answer you just gave. Now, or, or you want to say, add some more things or do I just go to the next question? Okay. How to move from low income, uh, what, how to move from low income to high income as a musician, it starts with, let, let me just give this one action point, is to create income streams. Income streams. The average millionaire, okay. I, I listed these things out in my book, the average millionaire has seven income streams. Seven income streams. Wow. So the question you ask yourself, wow. how do you build seven income streams for yourself? And these are, and let me tell you, there are up to 50 ways for you to make money from one thing that you know how to do in this age. That's true. Only if your eyes are open to it. That's true. Yes. There are many ways, but it's for you to focus on seven and I just build seven well. That's what makes you a millionaire, at least seven income streams, according to research. So, and, and it comes with, a, there's a place for um, how much you charge. There's a place for when uh, your boldness to charge. That's another different area. When people, when, when it comes to the confidence to charge money and put, uh, put a fee to what you are doing. But in terms of focus action, focus on building seven income streams as an, as from your music. I cannot begin to list everything now, but <laughs> I've listed some of them earlier. So that's basically it. Okay, okay. Now the next question is, are there other opportunities musicians are not utilizing? Maybe you need to shed more light on that. Are there other opportunities yes, that yes. musicians are not utilizing? I know you mentioned a few of them, but maybe there are some other ones that you just want yeah. to add. You know, just, just, mm. just, just help, help, uh, help us. 
I, th I think the area that musicians are not utilizing is the opportunity of teaching and sharing their ideas, their, sharing their knowledge. A lot of musicians are not utilizing that part. When I ask hmm. you now, who is the number one Nigerian YouTube drum YouTuber? Who is Nigeria's number one drum YouTuber? Mm -mm. You, you, you cannot immediately say, oh, this is this person that is in charge of drums in YouTube from Nigeria. <laughs> who is Nigeria's no. number one? Um, who runs Nigeria's number one online school? Online music school. Yo. I worked with a client. I worked with a client last day. She went, She launched a music school online, and it went. It was international and all those things. But recently, I've not been hearing much about the school anymore. But who is running Nigeria's number one online music school, especially now in this COVID era where people are not going to physical schools now? How do we? How are we running an online school? So that's an opportunity that people are, are not utilizing. Okay, there is the part of writing books. Okay. Yeah. I've not seen any book on there could be, but I've not seen any popular book on how to build a thriving and like this topic now, becoming a highly paid and highly influential musician. Maybe I'll write a book on it, Seth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be to write. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen, I've not seen a, a popular book in that area. So there's a huge market, a lot of people who want to learn about music, want to go into music, want to make money from music, but uh, uh, there are not a lot of people who are teaching this knowledge. So that's a, an opportunity that yeah. people are missing. Wow, 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 wow. And to, to add to that also, you know, one thing I've come to realize too is, just to add to all you've said so far, I've, I've, I, yes, I, I've come to realize too that quite a number of people, quite a number of music artists, you know, because like you said, um, what is required to make your song go far after it's ready it's finances. Mm. It's money. Exactly. It's money. You know. So if you have yes. your, if you have your own money, enough money to push a song, it will go far and mm. wide. That's the truth. So yeah. a lot of guys are actually waiting, waiting for one sponsor, waiting maybe those in the church, mm. waiting for the church, waiting for the pastor, waiting for one miracle person member yeah. that will come and say. Yeah. It's not easy to come by. Mm. Accepting is a miracle. So what I also mm. advise is. There's some um, as as music artists, if you can have a business or something by the side, have a business side by business, the side, yeah. have a side business that is funding your dream. You know, I tell exactly. people that your such such um side business that is funding your dream is provision for your dream. It's not the vision because yeah, people yeah, who don't yeah, have yeah, yeah, someone yeah. who actually has <laughs> it takes someone who actually has passion for music. You know, to have another mm. huge form of provision by the side, funding his music without being distracted from his music, which is his exactly. primary vision. Yes. You exactly. understand? So, if exactly. you have something yeah. by the side that is funding your dream, I mean, you have something that is bringing in maybe one million naira every month, something bringing mm. in some two million naira every month, and all of that. What is what is yeah. that amount that you cannot put into your dream? And it will go far. So, <laughs> this is all exactly. something some of us should look into. Get, I, I mean, at the yes. moment now, there's some things I'm, I'm working with some young guys about. There's some business ideas that I'm, you know, I'm working with some guys about that I'm, I'm also doing, you know, trying to get yeah. some funds to fund our dream, to fund our music vision. Yes. So that's just what Especially I want to Here in Nigeria, here in Nigeria, Nigeria yes, is not a place where you have one income stream. It's, it's you no know, people, 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 in, people need to learn how to filter advice based on your, uh, based on your location or where you are staying, no, no, your environment. So when, when people advise you abroad, you know, uh, uh, focus on one income stream and build it and, you know, exactly. don't, don't, customize all this kind of your advice. Yeah, that can customize it to your location first. <laughs> Nigeria <laughs> is not a place what? where... And when people say focus on your passion, leave job, focus on your passion exactly. and don't get a job and all those things. No, <laughs> in Nigeria, job is very important. Okay. <laughs> uh, finding something else you are doing that will give you money is very important for you that's to be true. able to fund your dream. So that's the, the, uh, the thing there. That's true. Wow. No, one last question. I, I know you have a book coming up. You have a very solid yes, book. 
that I know is going yes, to sir. is going to is going to tear, is going to pull down strongholds yes, and you know break <laughs> a lot of things and cause change, drastic yes, change. So tell us about your book. You know when is it coming out? How can we get it? Just mm. give us small points, sir, because I know a lot of th the things you have shared today they are in your book, and yes, people sir. need to yeah. get this information. I personally, I'm also going to talk about your book. You know, in as much as I'm also writing man and all of that, but we need to get this information. Yeah. We need to get information about your book out and get people to, you know, know about your book. So, how? Tell us about the book and how and when, you know, do we, do we get it? Okay. So the book is titled "The Arts and Science of Territorial Domination: um, Modern Game Plan, Modern Day Game Plan for Entrepreneurs and Organizations Who Want to Play a Bigger Game." So the book is basically centered around this thing about how you can take your skill, your passion, your message, and turn it into something big something territorial and these things come with ideas there are principles and ideas that you should have at the back of your mind that facilitate this kind of result for yourself you are going to learn the seven incomes the seven income streams or, or industries that most millionaires and billionaires invest their money you are going to learn this concept of how do you use your time very well there are eight wow. kind of thoughts that every individual needs to have when it comes to building a domination level industry, a domination level business, one of those thoughts, let me just share. One of those thoughts is that we are, you are not a hustler. You are a dominator. People have the wow. hustling mindset, which is a, a poverty mindset, but you mindset. need to have True. a domination mindset because that is biblical. That's how you should think. So that's, that's it. The book comes, the pre-order for the book starts on the 1st of August. So it's going to go on till the 30th of August. In fact, I How have a gift. Price? Yes, the book is 4,500, including shipping. Okay. That's the pre-order price? Yes. Yes. Okay, pre-order price, great. the book is 5,500, but pre-order price is uh, 4,500, including the shipping. And the, the, I wanted to say, the pre-orders for, for the first the first person who orders for that book has a special price. This is the first place I'm saying this. I've not seen this uh, any other place. Wow. The first person who orders for the book has a special price. The second to the to the 20th person have a special price. P people have prizes for them. The 20th to the 50th have prizes for them. So it's basically, wow. but everything is going to start on the 1st of August. So I'm not mentioning the platform now, how we are going to order. But it's on the 1st of August that I'm going to mention it and then people can order then. So all these things I've taught there are inside the book. And it's an amazing book that everybody should have. And it's, it's, I've not seen any book in that, written in that way. Territorial domination is something I've been thinking and, and creating the, for the last three years. So, and they are outstanding concepts. So this is the book. I have a print here, a print copy here. Okay. In fact, there are two covers. So anybody can choose the cover you want. There are two covers, the cover designs I put out. So choose the cover you want. Wow. That's what you get. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. This is, this is massive. <laughs> this is massive. <laughs> wow, Richard, thank you. Everybody thank follow, you. follow Richard. You know, his um, uh, um, handle is Richard Okere Jr. So Okere just Jr. keep, yes. yeah, follow, follow him on that and, and um, so that you, you, you keep yourself abreast with every information about the book, updates on the book, the progress and everything. Thank you, Richard, for coming on my platform today. Thank it's, you for it's, having me. It's, it's a huge honor. Thank you. I'm glad I know you. And uh, you have been a huge <laughs> blessing to me and, you know, my family too. Thank you so much. I, I trust Thank that you, when this book comes out, you're going to be <laughs> <laughs> So I trust that this book will go far and wide and, you know, help a lot of music because it's my, it's my heart um, desire, it's my heart cry that every musician actually gets value, gets benefit from his or her craft. It pains me when I see yeah. a lot of people, you know, leaving music that they are called to do because it's not benefiting them. There's, there's a friend of mine, one of yeah. my friends that I used to have, you know, we used to do music together then. He plays the sax and all of a sudden, saxophone wasn't paying him. And he just opted out and told me that he's quitting. I begged him. I yes. talked to him. I did everything possible. And the guy left music. He's not doing saxophone thing. And wow. it's very good. I mean, 
very good. But he left music. I, I felt okay. bad. So it's painful when I see people leave their crap because it's not encouraging, it's not paying their bills and all of that. So with a book that, such as this that you have, you know, it will help people open a lot of uh, musicians' eyes to, to the possibilities and the, the opportunities that their, that their craft exactly. creates. And exactly. they hatch into exactly. it. And, you know, they're doing well with exactly. this. It's helping other people. a powerful book, once you read it, you'll get so many ideas. I use so many ideas and examples of things you can start doing almost immediately to start seeing results wow. for. And not just wow. starting a business. I'm not sharing a new idea. It is how you can play at the highest capacity for yourself. Capacity. Your, your highest wow. creative mood in terms of wow. influence, in terms of income, in, in terms of impact. So that's what you get in the book. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Richard. We've had Thank a you so value, much. value adding period <laughs> within this last <laughs> one hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my show. Thank you. So, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for joining this wonderful time. I'm sure you've had, you know, value for from what we have shared on this platform the last one hour. Just um, follow Richard and get a lot of information on his book, and uh, you'll be glad you did. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, and thank you. Thank All you right. So much. Do have a wonderful evening. Bye. Yes, sir.